Hello everyone, Shen Thomas here. Um, I thought I'd take a little bit of time today and talk about some of the correct positions, you know, uh, when we do our Wing Chun tools. And, because uh, quite often on my videos, you know, I just say, yeah, Bong Sao, Tan Sao, Folk Sao, right? And maybe I haven't really uh, gone to more, gone into more detail, you know, and kind of specified um, the actual position of some of these tools, right? Uh, so, just really quick, uh, in our 12 tools that we do, um, you know, we get in our little Wing Chun stance where our hips are slightly forward, we're angled back just a little bit, you know. Um, that gives us the correct stance, uh, which is like the foundation of our tools. And then, of course, when we chamber, we actually, we don't just chamber here, or like the Shaolin down here, but we're actually up here and we keep the, the elbows kind of up. Uh, so it's almost like if you were to do an elbow strike right behind you, right? And so then that's our chamber, and quite often you'll see us do the chamber in the, in, the, in the sets as like a starting point, right? But usually we never come back this far because then the opponent can follow us and jam things. And so quite often we'll have the hand at least one fist distance away, you know, and whatever form it might take, you know, with our, with our back hand might be the Wu Sao, that's our guard hand, right? Man Sao Wu Sao position, okay? So anyway, on our, on our tools, on the actual structure, uh, the elbow tends to be in, even from the shoulder or even on the center line, depending on the tool, okay? And so for our Jom Sao, the Jom Sao, the elbow comes in, and we have this this angle with the wrist as as the arm kind of straightens right so for the most part our jump sal is comes forward and it's down and it's towards the opponent's uh dantine or or towards their belly button right and then that's what we use in our single sticky exercise we use a jump sal that it doesn't just come down but it comes down and forward okay but that same jump sal can be used at kind of any angle, right? But again, it's on the center line that we use it. And so even if we have to shift out of the way of incoming force, then that jump sal still goes into the opponent's center, and it's from our center aligned to the opponent's center, okay? So that's our jump sal, right? Kind of the correct angles the bicep almost kind of comes in and, and uh, stretches the tricep and then that it's it's basically the elbow power is used on almost all of our Wing Chun tools uh, so we're not really using the shoulder you know to move an arm we actually bring the arm in align it and then we use the elbow the shoulder still is like the anchor to our spine and our hips, right? But it's, it's almost all elbow power on any of our strikes, okay? Or to power any of our tools, okay? So again, the, the three main tools, you know, besides we have the Jom Sal that we talked about, the Man Sal, which is again, basically elbow in on my center line, pointing towards the opponent, and it, we get a little bit of this curve inward with our bicep, right, as we're bringing it in, you know. And a lot of Wing Chun, uh, they have this idea of um, making, creating a wedge or a triangle. So even if it's just one hand forward, it's still part of that wedge or part of that triangle that we're using. And then we go to Tan Sao. Tonsal again, the elbow follows kind of the curve of the chest. Elbows on the center line, you're one fist away. And you have a little bit of an angle, and then the, the palm is flat because that's actually a hook. Okay? Some people, they do a tonsal so low 
and again it is kind of a laying over technique but the idea is if you have that little bit of an angle then that's also structure that can't be collapsed and if you don't have any angle there then the opponent's arm can go right in and hit you if you have a little bit of an angle in then it actually stops them from there to there you know so it's actually a shield and again you have that a little bit of the curve to get that position right with your elbow in the center right so that's our tonsil and we don't want to extend too far out right we want to keep it to where if we were to make a fist we still have about three or four inches to strike from any of these tools and so the same thing with Wu Sao we still have the arm somewhat bent right or even our punches so our punches the power is about from here to there and this is still kind of bent okay and this is kind of our our downward punch in Wing Chun and it's like our Jom Sao but it's a punch and then we also have a punch where from this Man Sao position that it actually shoots out and up and it's like the ball on a chain being shot forward okay and of course after it delivers the power it doesn't stay out there because we don't want something that's extended with where it's almost straight so we deliver the power and come back so it's like a shock absorber it kind of delivers the power and comes back into another tool whether it's folk sal or comes back into a bong sal comes back into a ton sal right <clears throat> okay so and again this is using the elbow power and it's also connected to our stance and it even has even more power when we shift with that as we shift we get that power moving okay so again uh, there's their tonsil tool okay now bong sao comes out okay and bong sao is our wing arm okay but it moves somewhat forward and our center line is about right where the wrist is on the bong sao and it's our only tool where our elbows out and it's because our elbow is only out for just a limited time and then it comes back in okay and so all these tools are kind of stopping power vertically right well bong sao stops power horizontally and when the power comes and hits a bong sao, the power kind of shoots off from that angle of the arm. So anyway, the bong sao, as it rolls forward, the center line is about a little bit further than the wrist, okay? The elbow and this part of the, the, the arm, the bicep, the tricep, actually stays about level with the shoulder it can it can actually be possibly just a little bit higher to raise the elbow but we do want the elbow raised higher than the wrist okay and of course it has forward spiral energy about it or when force comes then we can kind of collapse that as we move right so it has more of a yin effect and if it gets pushed back against the body, then that's fine too. Because it's again like a shock absorber. A lot of our tools in Wing Chun, they don't look very powerful, but they have structure behind them. And they have a type of like a, a shock absorber uh, quality or power to them. That's like our superpowers. We, we change tools. But when, when a punch or force comes, it's like a shock absorber. So we can be relaxed but firm, right? And so real heavy duty punches like you'll see in a lot of martial arts are uh, uh, throwing these big powerful punches. Uh, you know, well, it doesn't really matter how powerful their punch is because we're just going to shock absorb. And we can throw anything out there to intercept that powerful stiff hard punch and 
and it can be relaxed and we absorb that power and we're relaxed so that's kind of the the magic of Wing Chun that um, people don't really understand they just think we're out here flopping our arms around all you know kind of whipping and kind of playing slap fight but it's actually this these angles have structure and they have their own power to them their own strength you could say but it's from the structure being aligned from each joint all the way down through the body and into the ground so in that way you could say Wing Chun's a lot like Tai Chi but we're not totally soft you know our moves do have some structure and we still do utilize power you know <clears throat> so anyway you know the our tools again Tan Sao, Bong Sao and then Folk Sao comes forward just like our punch where the elbow is on the center line and the forearm all the the joints align just like in our punch right but with the Folk Sao we turn the top of the hand so it's almost like a little hook that's relaxed okay uh, normally Folk Sao is this little sideways hook that we use in our Silum Tau form but when we use it for sticky hands then Folk Sao has a little bit of a forward hook okay so Folk Sao is right here and again the elbow comes along it's in the center line okay and the hands are forward going towards the opponent's throat and again we don't want to go too far with it we want to be able to have this angle to where our elbow can't get hurt if somebody tries to palm or lock our elbow right and then from these positions it takes just very little movement to go into a palm strike to go into a punch to go into a bong into a ton into a folk sow right so all these movements can be done and they're like different tools or different techniques right from a very small uh, space right or a really quick time to react and to change where like Shaolin you'd have to be moving the whole body you know each each strike each tool you got to kind of move the whole body where with Wing Chun it can be as simple as just a small wrist movement and realigning right and then the body kind of moves with that too so anyway just wanted to go over these tools and how we keep the elbow in to basically protect our chest and then when it comes to the head and this upper part because when you have the that angle sometimes people can punch through that right then that's where the tool changes again and it fills in that gap or when it extends it becomes again that wedge that pushes any kind of attack to the outside because what we do is we move forward with that punch and so if somebody's punching it catches and it kind of moves to the side of that wedge <clears throat> okay and then some people say well Wing Chun they just keep their head there and so like we're this robot right and then that head gets hit well actually we move the head and the body with the hands and so like on our wooden dummy we'll deal with what's coming but then we will shift and we will move our head and it's kind of like uh, you know these little head movements that they use in boxing you know uh, but we actually move the whole body with it and we don't bob the head up and down uh, because if you're dealing with other arts that kick then you'll be doing these head weaving and bobbing movements right and you'll do a head bob and you'll go right into a kick if somebody's throwing kicks so um, <clears throat> these head bobbing movements right they're really good if you're just playing hands and you're moving around then that's really good but if somebody's throwing kicks odds are you're gonna throw some punches and you'll do a head weave or a, a head slip and you'll you'll end up getting a kick right upside the head so in fact there's a 
a famous boxer I just saw a quote where he shifted from boxing and he went into kickboxing and he said well he can't really do those head slips anymore because he'll eat a kick uh, trying to do that so uh, in Wing Chun we do move the head but we still want to keep that structure throughout the body we don't want to we don't want to weave and lose that structure uh, and the the main principle of Wing Chun is to actually get in and engage the arms, trap the arms and hit, and not try to dodge arms coming. So with boxing, you have this idea of having to guard up and being dodging and then hitting, which is, it's a good strategy, but it burns a lot more energy than Wing Chun. And Wing Chun would actually rather be jamming the arms and controlling instead of just moving and dodging. So anyway, some more little tips on Kung Fu and Wing Chun, and I'll see you next time.